In the world of Persona, a select few individuals possess the power to break free from the chains that bind them and summon what is known as a Persona. Even fewer have the ability known as the Wild Card, allowing them to wield multiple Personas at once. Welcome to the Persona Compendium, where we're going to cover the history and symbolism of some of the franchise's most notable shadows, demons, and Personas. Today we're going to have a look at the first Persona that Ryuji Sakamoto awakens to in Persona 5, Captain Kid. Captain Kid first appears before Ryuji when Morgana and Joker are trapped by Kamoshida and his guards. Ryuji is forced to watch while his friends are subjected to Kamoshida's violence while reliving memories of his trauma with the track team. This pain, combined with the grief that he still feels over his past, awakens him to his persona in a violent eruption of blue fire and wind. After the dust settles, we see Ryuji clad in an all-black leather outfit, accompanied by his new persona, and from there, Ryuji solidifies his resolve as a force of rebellion for good. But who exactly is Captain Kid? And why is he Ryuji's persona? Now unlike many other personas in the game, Captain Kid is directly based on a real historical figure. Captain William Kidd was a privateer in the 17th century from Scotland. Famously, he defended the English colony of Nevis from the French ships, and as such he was gifted a letter of marquee from the British government, granting him legal protection. However, on a voyage through the Indian Ocean, without his knowledge, William Kidd's crew plundered a neutral ship, causing him to lose favor with the British monarchy. As punishment for this incident and other accusations of piracy, William Kidd was sentenced to death. But before his execution, he exclaimed that he had left behind a cache of treasure buried at some unknown location. This story of buried treasure is one of a few actual historical accounts of pirates burying treasure, and along with other notable stories, has served as the inspiration for many notable works like Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Due to his nature as a historical figure, Captain Kidd's history isn't really packed full of deeply layered symbolism or specific choices about his character or theming, but rather it's a real account of an actual pirate living according to to the pirate's lifestyle. And now while this history may be lacking in storytelling quality, I think that Captain Kidd serves as an excellent persona to represent Ryuji. But before we get into that, let's take a look at his design. From the moment you lay eyes on Captain Kidd, a strong sense of aesthetic theming is made clear by his visuals. A large bony figure stands atop a jet black ship. Draped over the outline of a ribcage is a bright blue naval coat, complete with silver chains and other various hardware. Beneath his coat, we see baggy jeans that taper around the shin just before reaching exaggerated white high-top boots. Accentuating the whole outfit is a bright red cape, seemingly battle-damaged from previous encounters and scraps. Instead of the traditional hook hand, we see a much more aggressive smoking cannon, gold-plated nonetheless. And lastly is his skull and hat. His face is an angry-looking skull with a single piercing red eye. Covering the rest of it is an over-the-top classic pirate hat, complete with a smaller skull and two cutlasses acting as crossbones. We also see two more cutlasses being used as a collar attached to the straps on his naval coat. From this design, we can catch a glimpse of the attitude of this persona, and by extension, its user. Captain Kidd is loud and rebellious. He stands alone atop his pirate ship like a surfboard, conveying the message that this is a one-man crew capable of the destruction that you would normally associate with a full pirate crew. Furthering this point is his cannon hand. The ever-smoking cannon tells us that Captain Kidd is never far from a fight, and always waiting for a chance to throw down the gauntlet and put some corrupt bastard in their place. Now on that note, let's have a look at his abilities as a persona. Captain Kidd specializes in both electric and physical attacks. Now usually in the Persona series, we see the less intellectually complex characters specialize in physical abilities, and, well, Ryuji doesn't do a whole lot to break that trend. However, in Ryuji's case, it does go a bit deeper than just funny dumb character gets the strong physical attacks. Ryuji, of course, as we all know, has a background in sports and athletics, thus giving him a strong basis for this specialty baked into his backstory. To exemplify this further, when evolved into his fullest potential, Ryuji can learn the skill God's Hand, which is the most damaging single-target physical attack in the game. So, it's clear that the game wants us to build him as a physical user. But what, then, explains the electric attacks? Well, there's a few different ways we can look at this. From the perspective of Captain Kidd as a historical figure and as a pirate, it may be possible that his affinity for electricity could be a reference to the storms that sailors and pirates so famously have to brave while on the sea. Lightning is often the most striking characteristic of these ocean storms, and as such we see it represented in most media that seeks to reference this. However, from the point of Ryuji, this lightning may represent something a bit less literal. Ryuji is a very outspoken
outspoken and loud character. He is never afraid to speak his mind and has no problem standing out from the crowd. From this lens, we could interpret the electricity as his electric personality being represented through his persona. Personally, I'd like to believe the answer to this question is actually both. Drawing from the historical basis of William Kidd and combining it with Ryuji's established characteristics makes for an excellent addition to Captain Kidd's moveset that makes him much better as a representation of both Ryuji and William Kidd. Ryuji's entire character is defined by a strong personal image. He knows what he's about, and he won't let anyone take that away from him. It doesn't matter if it's school, corrupt politicians, or even malignant gods, Ryuji will stand up and fight anyone that pushes him. This rowdy attitude is reflected in Captain Kidd a famous pirate who sailed the seven seas in search of gold and treasure. Or at least that's how the story goes. While his exploits as a pirate might be lacking in true historical basis, his legend went on to become the inspiration for countless pirate stories to come. But more than that, Captain Kidd represents a spirit of rebellion, core to Ryuji as a Persona user and the game as a whole. Since your name has been tarnished already, why not hoist the flag and wreak havoc? There is no turning back. The Skull of Rebellion is your flag henceforth. This is the first and one of the only lines that Captain Kidd ever speaks in the game, and it's used to encourage Ryuji to fly his Skull of Rebellion with pride. From this, we can see the extreme importance that Captain Kidd places on rebellion and individualism. This directly lines up with Ryuji's self-image and values. Just like our sin was created to be an exaggerated version of Joker's innermost desires and emotions, Captain Kidd is all of Ryuji's pain and fury towards the system that has held him down given life in the purest form of rebellion, a literal pirate. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. First of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for getting me to a thousand subscribers. It means so much to me that you guys are all willing to support my content. Secondly, if you made it this far, then you probably liked what I had to say. So if that's the case, be sure to leave me a like so I know I'm doing something right. Also, please leave me a comment letting me know what personas you guys want me to cover next time. It can really be anything, a main character's persona, an antagonist persona, or even one of the demons that can be recruited. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an upload, and also I have a Twitter and an Instagram if you would like to hit me up on either of those platforms. Links to those will be below. But with all that YouTube stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.